<coughs> hey guys, good evening and welcome back again to your Vedantu Native Late English channel. I hope all of you are doing great, having a good time. So, my dear students, just quickly let me know in the chats if all of you can hear me, if I'm perfectly audible and visible to every one of you. Quickly let me know in the chats. Quickly let me know in the chats. Quickly let me know in the chats if all of you can hear me, if I'm perfectly audible and visible to every one of you. Yes? So, my dear students, as I had told you, we'll be starting the most expected questions from every chapter as far as your NEET 2023 is concerned, basically. Right? So today I have selected two chapters, one is electrochemistry and one more is solution. Why I selected these two chapters? Because there is the CBSE examination for class 12 students as well tomorrow. So this session will help them as well. So today's session is particularly for NEET 2023 aspirants as well as the students who are going to write the CBSE chemistry tomorrow. Right? So quickly, give me some green signal from the chats, if all of you can hear me, if I'm perfectly audible, visible to everyone. Yes. Let me know quickly in the chats, people. We are meeting after so long, yeah? Let me know in the chats quickly. All right. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Yes, tomorrow is chemistry CBSE board examination. Absolutely. Right? So this session will be beneficial to all the CBSE board students as well. All right, people. So let's get going then. Let's get started with the today's session. So I have come up with two chapters. One is electrochemistry and one is solution. Just let me once in the chats. Have you studied these two chapters? Are you done with the study of these two chapters? Let me know once in the chats quickly. Someone is saying, sir, please teach concepts as well. Well, these two chapters I have already taught on this channel, right? You can just search it. Electrochemistry by Vaseem sir, you'll get it. Solution by Vaseem sir, you'll get it. Perfect. So it's going to be a pure problem solving session. The most expected questions from these two chapters. Yeah. Perfect people. So before starting the session, the ones who are new to the channel, the ones who do not know me, a quick introduction about me. My name is Vaseem Bhatt and I'm your chemistry master teacher here on this Vedantu Neat English channel. At the same time, the ones who have not liked the session yet, I would want you guys to like the session. Share this video with everyone whosoever is preparing for NEET 2023. Even if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, please do subscribe to the channel as well so that you remain updated about all the upcoming sessions which we'll be taking from now onwards regularly. Yeah? Perfect. So let's get going then. Let's get started with the first chapter that is electrochemistry. Right? What all possible types of questions can be asked in the upcoming NEET 2023 examination from the chapter electrochemistry. Let's have a look. And follow this series strictly, my dear students, okay? All right, the first question, which is a very simple and basic question. You are given with a cell reaction. You are given with a cell reaction and you are supposed to represent the cell with the help of this particular cell reaction. How do we do? How do we represent the cell basically? There is one simple thing which you must be remembering from now onwards. Have a look, people. If I ask you what is the charge present on copper, it's zero. The charge present on silver, that is plus one. The charge present on copper here, it's plus two. The charge present on silver, it is zero, right? Now, my dear students, just tell me one thing. Is the oxidation state of copper increasing or decreasing? Oxidation state of copper is changing from zero to plus two. So there is increase in the oxidation state of copper. Do remember, increase in the oxidation state is something which we call as oxidation. That means this copper is undergoing oxidation right here. Number one. Number two, silver is changing its oxidation state from plus one to zero. Silver is changing its oxidation state from plus one to zero. That means decrease in the oxidation is happening. Decrease in the oxidation state is what we call as a reduction. So this Ag positive is undergoing a reduction. So till now you got to know which one is undergoing oxidation and which one is undergoing reduction. You got to know that. Now people, let me tell you, oxidation always takes place at anode and reduction always takes place at cathode. This is something which you must be knowing. Now have a look. 
Now you are going to rep represent the cell. So you'll be placing two lines which represent the salt bridge first of all. On the left side of the salt bridge, you'll be always writing the anode. And on the right side of the salt bridge, you'll be always writing the cathode, right? And at anode, what's happening? At anode, oxidation is happening. Copper is getting oxidized to Cu dipositive. So copper solid is getting converted into copper dipositive aqueous. This is your anode over here. This is your anode over here, right? In the similar way, people, what is going to happen at the cathode? At the cathode, reduction takes place. Ag positive is undergoing reduction, getting converted into Ag. So the re so I'm going to write it like this. Ag positive aqueous at cathode is undergoing reduction and getting converted into Ag solid. So this is how you are just going to represent the cell whose reaction was given to us. I hope this is clear to everyone, right? So what is going to be the correct answer of this question? It's going to be option A. Simple and basic question this was, number one. Number two, look at all these things which are given to us. Which of the following is correct? Copper is the reducing agent. Overall cell reaction is this. Copper is cathode, silver is anode. You have to identify which all statements are correct among all, okay? Now people, how you guys are going to do it? Have a look. First thing, a cell is given to me. On the left hand side of the cell, you always write the anode. On the right hand side of the cell, you always write the cathode, right? And you must be knowing at anode oxidation takes place. At anode oxidation takes place. Copper is getting converted to copper dipositive. At anode, what happens? Oxidation takes place. Copper is getting converted into copper dipositive. So copper solid, it's going to get converted into copper dipositive aqueous with this you'll be getting two electrons here, right? When copper will be getting converted to copper dipositive, there'll be loss of two electrons as well, right? This is the reaction at anode. In the similar way, if I ask you, what is going to be the reaction taking place at cathode? At the cathode, reduction takes place. Reduction means gain of electrons. Ag positive is getting converted into Ag. So the reaction has to be Ag positive aqueous has to gain one electron and then only it will be getting converted into Ag solid. So you got the reaction at anode, you got the reaction at cathode, right? Now people, what is the next step which you guys will be doing? You'll be balancing the electrons. Over here you've got two electrons, right here just one electron. So multiply this reaction by number two. When you multiply the reaction by two, after multiplying the reaction by two, this becomes two times, this becomes two times, even this becomes two times. Now you can add these two reactions. And when you add the two reactions, what is the net reaction which you'll be getting? It's gonna be copper solid, copper solid plus two times Ag positive aqueous, two times Ag positive aqueous, it gives copper dipositive aqueous plus two times Ag solid. So this is the net cell reaction which is taking place in the cell, okay? Now we will have a look exactly. In this particular reaction, copper, this copper, it's undergoing oxidation. This copper is losing electrons. This copper is undergoing oxidation. If copper is undergoing oxidation, the one which undergoes oxidation is called as the reducing agent. So copper over here is behaving like the reducing agent. This Ag positive, Ag positive is gaining electrons. So Ag positive is undergoing reduction. The one which undergoes reduction is called as the oxidizing agent. As simple as that. Now, just have a look exactly what is happening. As per the question is concerned, which of the following is correct? Copper is reducing agent. That's correct. Copper is reducing agent. So one is correct. One is correct. Copper is reducing agent. Second, overall cell reaction. Is this the overall cell reaction? Yes, this is the overall cell reaction. So second is also correct. Second is also correct. Okay. Copper is cathode. Is copper cathode or silver cathode? Silver is cathode and copper is anode. So third statement is wrong. Fourth statement is also wrong. So it's going to be option four, which is going to be the correct answer of this particular question. Just let me know once in the chats if it is clear to everyone. Absolutely, guys. All of you are perfectly right. Option D is the one which is going to be the correct answer of the question. Moving on to one more. Which of the following is the strong oxidizing agent? Strong oxidizing agent. Strong oxidizing agent always has more oxidizing power. Do remember this first of all. A strong oxidizing agent will always have more oxidizing power, right? Oxidizing agent is the one which undergoes reduction. 
oxidizing agent is the one which undergoes a reduction. The one which can undergo reduction easily will be the better oxidizing agent, will have more oxidizing power. Now the point is, which can undergo reduction easily? The one whose SRP value, the one whose SRP value will be more, will undergo reduction easily, better oxidizing agent, more oxidizing power, right? Now look at all these values which are given to us. Are these SRP values or SOP values? How do we check them? Lithium, its oxidation state is plus one here. Oxidation state zero here. Plus one to zero. Decrease in the oxidation state means reduction. So this is SRP. This is SRP. This is SRP. This is SRP. So all these are basically SRP values given. Now have a look exactly and see which one has got the maximum SRP. Minus 3.03, minus 2.74, minus 2.71 minus 2.37 this is the maximum srp this is the maximum srp whose srp it is it is the srp of the magnesium dipositive which is undergoing reduction basically right it is the srp of magnesium dipositive so i must say magnesium dipositive has got maximum srp <clears throat> its srp is maximum so i must say it will undergo reduction easily the one which undergoes reduction easily, that's going to be the better oxidizing agent. And of course, it's going to have more oxidizing power. It will have more oxidizing power, correct? So it's going to be Mg di positive, which is going to be the correct answer of this particular question as well. I'm sure this is clear. Right? Perfect. Look at one more question, guys. Just see exactly if you can solve this sort of a question or not. Standard electrode potentials. It's not mentioned that whether these are SOPs or SRPs. It's just mentioned that standard electrode potentials. Whenever it will be given in this format, standard electrode potential. Just remember, it's going to be basically the SRP. Standard electrode potential means SRP, okay, whenever it's mentioned like this. So SRP of X, Y, and Z is given to us. SRP of X is minus 1.2 volt, SRP of Y is plus 0.5 volt, SRP of Z is minus 3.0 volt. We need to see which one of the following has got the maximum reducing power. All right, maximum reducing power. The one which will be having maximum reducing power will be definitely a better reducing agent. A better reducing agent will undergo oxidation easily. The one which will be having maximum SOP will undergo oxidation easily. The one which will be having maximum SOP will undergo oxidation easily, will be the better reducing agent, more reducing power, right? Now, these are SRP values given. These are SRP values given. Perfect. But I need to compare the SOP values. Just, just convert them into SOPs. So SOP of this one is one plus 1.2, reverse the sign, minus 0 0.5, plus 3.0. So you got the SOP values, right? Now, which one has got the maximum SOP? This is something which is having maximum SOP. The one which has the maximum SOP will undergo oxidation easily, better reducing agent, more reducing power. So the reducing power of the elements, maximum will be for Z, followed by X, followed by Y. This is going to be the order, right? I'm sure majority of you guys gave the right answer. Absolutely, I can see the chats. You all gave the right answer. Wonderful. Good job. All right, people. Moving on to one more question then. Moving on to one more question. <clears throat> look at this one. You should be able to solve this sort of equation as well. It's a very simple equation. Have a look. <coughs> <coughs> Understand, guys. If you remember, I would have told you E naught cell, that's equal to E naught of cathode minus E naught of anode. Right? which you can write as SRP of cathode minus SRP of anode, right? You can write it like this as well. This is SRP of cathode, SRP of anode, right? This is one relation by means of which you can calculate E0 cell. Well, can you convert these? Can you convert this equation into a different format as well? You can do that. How exactly? Let me show it to you. Well, people, instead of SRP of cathode, I can write minus SOP of cathode right minus in between instead of srp of anode i can write minus sop of cat minus sop of anode minus minus makes it plus right so you can write it as sop of anode minus sop of cathode 
this is one more relation which you got to calculate E0 cell. Perfect. Or you can just do one more thing. You can just do one more thing. One thing you can do. Have a look. One you can convert into SOP. Another you one you can keep as SRP only. For example, this SRP of cathode. You can write minus SOP of cathode. This you can keep as such. Minus SRP of anode. Right? This can be one more relation. Or you can change this one. You can keep SRP of cathode as such. Right? SRP of anode you can write minus SOP of anode. Minus SOP of anode. Minus minus makes it plus. Right? Now these are the different relations which can be made. These are interconvertible into SOP, SRP. Now choose the correct answers. SRP of cathode minus SRP of anode. Is there anyone as SRP of cathode minus SRP of anode? There is nothing like that. Oxidation potential of anode plus reduction potential of cathode. Oxidation potential of cathode. Oxidation potential of cathode. Where is it? Is there anywhere you can see oxidation potential of cathode? Oxidation potential of cathode and plus wait which statement I'm talking okay oxidation potential of anode oxidation potential of anode plus reduction potential of cathode oxidation potential of anode and I can see oxidation potential of anode and reduction potential of cathode yes this one is correct second is correct okay Sec next one is the reduction potential of anode do you see reduction potential of anode anywhere this is reduction potential of anode plus reduction potential of cathode reduction potential of anode plus reduction potential of cathode plus reduction potential of cathode no there is nothing like that check the last one oxidation potential of anode minus oxidation potential of cathode oxidation potential of anode minus oxidation potential of cathode right so this is the correct one as well so it's going to be two and four which are going to give you the same e naught cell value right perfect let me know quickly in the chats okay so it's going to be 2 and 4, which is correct. Look at this particular equation. The standard oxidation potential for the following half cell reactions. So two half cell reactions are given to us. Look at the reactions carefully. Whether these reactions involve the loss of electron or gain of electrons. Loss of electrons is happening. Two electrons being lost, two electrons being lost. Loss of electrons, something which you call as oxidation. Right? So zinc is undergoing oxidation. Even iron is undergoing oxidation. Okay, so that means these are SOP values which are given. These are SOP values for the ones which are undergoing oxidation, correct? So this is SOP value of zinc, this is SOP value of iron. Perfect. Now my dear students, just convert them into SRP values. SRP values. Just change the sign. Minus 0 0.76 volt. Just change the sign. Minus 0 0.41 volt. Now, people, you basically have got two half cells. You basically have got two electrodes, right? Now, if you connect these electrodes externally as well as internally, if you connect two electrodes externally, internally, can I say I'll be getting one complete galvanic cell? Absolutely, I'll be getting the galvanic cell. How do we calculate? <clears throat> how do we calculate the standard EMF of that galvanic cell? So, E naught cell we have to calculate for the cell whose reaction is given to us. For the cell whose reaction is given to us, E naught cell. That is E0 of cathode minus E0 of anode, right? So this is SRP of cathode minus SRP of anode. Perfect. Now look at the reaction carefully and see which is anode and which is cathode. Have a look. Zinc is undergoing oxidation. Zinc is undergoing oxidation. Oxidation takes place at anode. So zinc is anode, iron is cathode. Zinc is anode, iron is cathode. E0 of cathode. SRP of cathode. SRP of iron. SRP of iron we already got minus 0.41 minus. SRP of anode, SRP of anode, SRP of zinc, that is minus 0 0.76, so it is plus 0 0.76, just solve it, get the answer in volts, that's it. The question is done and dusted. I mean, you should be able to solve this sort of equation as well, okay? All right, look at this particular equation. You have got two electrodes. You have got two, ele two electrodes. This is one electrode whose certain value is given. I don't know what value it is. Another electrode is for chromium. It's some value is also given to us. So we have got basically two electrodes. Understand. Two electrodes we have. Okay. Look at, look at these values basically. Is this SOP or SRP? Plus 4 to plus 2. Plus 4 to plus 2. Decrease in the oxidation state. Reduction. Right. So this is SRP. This is SRP value. 
plus 3 to 0 decrease in the oxidation state again SRP so basically my dear students you are given two electrodes now these two electrodes you'll be connecting externally as well as internally you'll be connecting these two electrodes externally as well as internally you'll be getting a one complete galvanic cell you'll be getting one complete galvanic cell and you have to calculate the standard EMF of that galvanic cell that is just going to be again E naught of cathode minus E naught of anode, which is SRP of cathode minus SRP of anode, right? Now, which one is cathode, which one is anode? Have a look. Two electrodes are given. Look at, compare the SRP values. Can I say this SRP value is more? More the SRP, more the tendency to undergo reduction. So, this one is going to behave like the cathode. That means the other electrode is going to behave like the anode. That's all. Standard reduction potential of cathode, that's 0.15 minus standard reduction potential of anode that's minus 0 0.74 which makes it plus 0 0.74 solid get the answer in moles that's it done and dusted right perfect moving on to one more question all right one simple question we are given with a half cell we have to calculate the oxidation potential of this particular half cell that's given to us okay now how do you calculate the oxidation potential of the half cells how do we calculate the oxidation potential of the electrodes under non-standard conditions? How do you do that? You'll have to use the Nernest equation. Now, how will I be using Nernest equation in this particular equation? Have a look. The cell that's given to me, if you analyze the cell, this is iron in zero oxidation state, iron in plus two oxidation state. Zero to plus two means increase in the oxidation state. Increase in the oxidation state is oxid oxidation. Oxidation means loss of electrons. That means when iron will be getting converted into Fe di positive, when iron will be getting converted into Fe di positive, it will be losing two electrons. Of course, zero to plus two, it will be losing two electrons. We are supposed to calculate the oxidation potential. In order to calculate the oxidation potential, I'll make sure this half cell behaves like the anode. Because at anode only oxidation takes place. So let me make sure that this half cell behaves like the anode. At anode, what happens? Oxidation takes place. Iron is getting converted into Fe di positive. So the reaction has to be Fe solid gets converted into Fe di positive aqueous. And with this, you'll be writing two electrons. If I ask you how many moles of electrons are being exchanged in the reaction, I must say two moles of electrons are being exchanged in the net reaction. Two moles, right? Two moles of electrons are being exchanged. N is two. If you want to calculate the reaction quotient, reaction quotient, how you'll be calculating? Just start with the product. You'll write concentration of Fe di positive raised power stoichiometric quotient, right? This is solid, its active mass is unity. Now, what is the concentration of Fe di positive? The concentration of Fe di positive is equal to 0 0.1 molar. 0 0.1 means 10 raised power minus 1, right? Perfect. So this is QC. N you got, QC you got. Now it is just you have to use the Nernest equation. Nernest equation says oxidation potential of the half cell is equal to standard oxidation potential of the half cell minus 0 0.0591 divided by N and it is log of QC, right? Simple and basic. So oxidation potential of the half cell is equal to standard oxidation potential. Well, is this standard oxidation potential or standard reduction potential? Check it. Plus two, zero. Plus 2 to 0, decrease. Decrease means reduction. So this is SRP. Do I need SRP here? No. I need SOP. So reverse the sign. So instead of minus 0 0.44, you'll be writing plus 0 0.44. Minus 0 0.0591. N value already you got. Log of QC. QC is 10 raised by minus 1. Now, a bit of calculation is needed. The question is done and dusted. It's 0 0.44 minus log of m raised power n is n log m so minus one comes to the front it becomes positive 0 0.0591 divided by 2 and the answer is going to be in volts so this is how you'll be calculating the oxidation potential of the half cell which we were supposed to calculate is that clear to everyone it has to be clear simple and basic question this was all right people look at one more question calculate the emf of the following cell at 25 degrees centigrade we are given the cell we are supposed to calculate its AMF. E naught cell is given. All the other parameters are given. See exactly how do we solve this sort of equation. Look at the equation carefully. These two lines, they'll be representing the solid bridge. On the left side of the solid bridge, we have got anode. So this is my anode. On the right side, we have got cathode. So this is my cathode. 
at anode what happens oxidation takes place at anode oxidation takes place m is getting converted to m di positive m is getting converted to m di positive so if you want to write the reaction at anode m is getting converted to m di positive so the reaction has to be m solid it gives m di positive aqueous since oxidation is happening so loss of electrons means two electrons on the right side okay so this is the reaction taking place at anode similarly if i ask you what is the reaction taking place at cathode at cathode reduction takes place m di positive is getting converted into m so m di positive aqueous at the cathode will be definitely gaining some two electrons it will be getting converted into m solid so i got the reaction at anode i got the reaction at cathode if i ask you whether the electrons are balanced or not absolutely the electrons are balanced so you can directly add the two reactions now add the two reactions on adding m solid m solid gets cancelled out two electrons two electrons cancel out so i must say two moles of electrons are being exchanged in the net cell reaction so after adding them up it's going to be m di positive aqueous m di positive aqueous it gives m di positive aqueous perfect now people which m di positive aqueous this is is this the cathodic m di positive or anodic this is the cathodic m di positive cathodic m di positive whose concentration is 10 raised per minus 4 so its concentration is 10 raised per minus 4 molar this is the cathodic one this is the anodic m di positive anodic m di positive has got the concentration of 10 raised per minus 2 molar correct now people just do one thing write the reaction quotient reaction quotient how start with the product you'll write the concentration of this m di positive that's 10 raised per minus 2 divide by concentration of this m di positive that's 10 raised per minus 4 the value comes out to be 10 raised per 2 so this is qc qc you got and you got now you'll be using the nernst equation which says e cell is equal to e not cell minus 0.0591 divided by n and it's going to be log of qc right so e cell you are supposed to calculate which is e not cell e not cell is 4 volt minus 0.0591 n value you already got that's 2 and it's log of qc qc value is 10 raised per 2 qc value is 10 raised per 2 as simple as that right so it's just a matter of calculation now so it's going to be 4 minus 0.0591 divided by 2 log of m raised per n is n log m so 2 comes to the front log 10 is 1 2 to got cancelled just solve this get the e cell value which you were supposed to calculate is this clear to everyone Yes. Perfect. All right. Let me move on to one more question then. If this is clear, let's move on to one more question. Let's move on to one more question. All right. Again, a very simple question. This is. Look at the question carefully and see how to approach this sort of a question. You are given basically with some net cell reaction. This is a net cell reaction of some cell. There is a cell, for example, some galvanic cell whose net cell reaction is given to me. E not value is given. We are supposed to calculate the equilibrium constant. Since we are supposed to calculate the equilibrium constant, so I'll make sure the cell is at equilibrium. So assume that the cell is at equilibrium. Since we are supposed to calculate the equilibrium constant, so I'm assuming the cell is at equilibrium. If the cell is at equilibrium, do remember at equilibrium. E cell is equal to zero, and Q C is replaced by K E Q when the cell is at equilibrium, right? Now, first of all, I'll be using the direct equation, Nernst equation at equilibrium, which will be equal to E not cell is equal to zero point zero five nine one divided by n. Now it's going to be log of instead of Q C. I'll be writing K E Q, correct? E not cell is given to you. Zero point four six is equal to 0.0591 divided by what is the n value what is the n n means number of moles of electrons exchanged in the net cell reaction number of moles of electrons exchanged in the net cell reaction since one mole of copper is losing two moles of electrons then is getting converted into copper di positive right i can say that one mole of copper is losing two moles of electrons and then getting converted into copper di positive so how many electrons are being exchanged in the net cell reaction two moles this is log of keq when you solve this you get something like this log of keq is approximately equal to 15.6 log of keq is approximately equal to 15.6 
Now, if you got log of k eq approximately equal to 15.6, if I take nt log on both the sides, I'll write k eq is equal to nt log of 15.6. How do you solve the nt log of 15.6? Can you tell me? How do you solve the nt log of 15.6? 15.6 you can break as 15 plus 0 0.6. This 15 you can directly write as 10 raised to the power 15. You can directly write as 10 raised to the power 15. 0 0.6 is basically the log of 4. So just multiply it with 4. This is the exact value of the, this is the approximate value of the equilibrium constant, right? Which is 4 in 10 raised to the power 15. So 4 into 10 raised to the power 15 is going to be the correct answer of the equation. Is this clear? Is this clear, people, quickly? Perfect. Moving ahead. Moving ahead. This sort of equation you should be able to solve on your own. You are supposed to calculate inert cell. Equilibrium constant is given. So same expression you'll be using. Nernest equation at equilibrium. And you'll be solving this sort of equation. It's a similar type. You need to give it a try and you can let me know its answer in the comment section once the video ends, okay? Now guys, have a look on one more type of the equation. Understand, the standard gives free energy. We need to calculate. Standard gives free energy, delta G naught. Delta G naught is basically minus NF E naught cell. Delta G naught is basically minus NF E naught cell. So first of all, E naught cell must be given to me somewhere. Yes, E0 cell is given. Faraday's constant, it's 96500 coulomb. N, N means number of moles of electrons exchanged. Number of moles of electrons exchanged. Look at this particular reaction. How many moles of electrons do you think are being exchanged? I can say one mole of zinc is losing two moles of electrons, then getting converted to Zn di positive. One mole of zinc is losing two moles of electrons, then getting converted to zinc di positive. So N value over here, I can say is 2, Faraday's constant is 96500 coulombs, E0 cell, that is 2 volt, right? Just solve it, you'll be getting the answer in joules from here. But are we supposed to calculate delta G in joules or kilojoules? We are supposed to calculate delta G in kilojoules. So divide it with 1000 as well, then only the answer will be coming in kilojoules, right? So delta G0 like this, you'll be easily calculating, yeah? Perfect. So after solving, you'll be getting the exact answer as minus 384 kilojoules. I'm sure this is clear to everyone. Moving ahead. <coughs> Moving ahead. Look at this particular equation. Look at this particular equation. Well, the, there is some misprint I can see. This is, I guess, E naught of Cu di positive. And this is Cu, okay. Let me see the equation first. All right. See, guys, what the equation is exactly. <laughs> One simple question again. <clears throat> There's a reaction given copper di positive plus electron. It gives copper positive aqueous. Its E value, which I'm representing with E1, that's given to me as 0 0.15 volt. Correct? There is one more reaction that's given. What is that? That is copper positive plus electron, it gives copper solid. It gives copper solid. Its E value is also given. How much? Plus 0 0.5. Plus 0 0.5 volts, right? Now, my dear students, understand and analyze things. We are supposed to calculate the value of E naught. Cu di positive gives copper. How do you write this particular reaction? You have to convert copper di positive into copper. So copper di positive has to definitely gain two electrons, then only it will be getting converted into copper. This has to be the reaction whose E value you have to calculate. Whose E value you have to calculate, right? Now, how do you approach to these sort of questions? What you'll be exactly doing? The reaction whose E value is to be calculated. The reaction whose E value is to be calculated. You will be making that reaction from the given reactions. How do, you, how do you make this particular reaction? How do you make this particular reaction? If I just add first and second, this copper positive, copper positive gets cancelled. It will be Cu di positive plus two electrons gives copper solid. That means you are getting this reaction. So can I say third reaction you are getting when you are adding first and second? 
third reaction you are getting when you are adding first and second yeah right third reaction you are getting when you are adding first and second now if you are thinking that you will just write e3 is equal to e1 plus e2 and you will get the answer no you'll be solving this question in terms of delta g so instead of 3 you'll be writing delta g for the third reaction is equal to instead of 1 you'll be writing delta g for the first reaction plus delta g for the second reaction delta g for 3 means minus n3 f3 f e3 delta g1 means minus n1 f e1 this is minus n2 f e2 so f f f cancelled multiply throughout with minus so finally you'll be getting e3 value which comes out to be n1 e1 plus n2 e2 divided by n3 now my dear students what is n1 what is n2 what is n3 how many electrons are being exchanged in the first reaction one so this is the n1 value n2 value n3 value n1 value is one n2 is one n3 is two so basically n1 n2 n3 are given to us e1 e2 are also given to us you just need to put the values get the value of e3 that's all isn't it simple and basic you should be able to solve this sort of equation as well it's again simple okay look at one more question look at one more question have a look on the basis of the information available from the reaction delta g is given the minimum emf required to carry out the electrolysis of al2o3 all right we need to calculate emf we need to calculate emf delta g is given emf is to be calculated you know delta g is nothing that is minus n f e cell delta g is basically minus n f e cell right now delta g is given to us in kilojoules right so delta g is given to us in kilojoules minus 827 let me convert it into joules into 10 raised power 3 is equal to minus times n what is n here n means number of moles of electrons exchanged n means number of moles of electrons exchanged in the cell reaction see if I ask you what is the oxidation state of aluminum here? Zero. Oxidation state of aluminum here, it's plus three. Zero to plus three. Increase in the oxidation state. Means oxidation, loss of electrons. So aluminum is changing its oxidation state from zero to plus three. So it's undergoing oxidation. It will be losing electrons. How many electrons it's losing? Final oxidation state minus initial. The value comes out to be three. That means one mole of aluminum is losing three moles of electrons. One mole of aluminium is losing three moles of electrons. But do I have one mole of aluminium or four by three moles? I have four by three moles. I got to know one mole of aluminium is losing four by three moles of, sorry. One mole of aluminium is losing three moles of electrons. So four by three moles of aluminium will be losing four by three multiplied by three. The value comes out to be four moles of electrons. So this is the N value. N value you got to know as four. N value you got to know as four. Faraday's constant, you must be knowing 96500 coulombs and multiplied by E cell. So can I say we got one equation which just contains one unknown, that's E cell. So just solve it, get the value of E cell which you were supposed to calculate. Again, a simple basic equation. So finally, after solving, this is going to be the correct answer of the equation, option B. Yeah. Okay. Look at one more equation. Look at one more equation. Sir, how three moles... Calculate the change in the oxidation state. Final oxidation state of aluminum was plus 3. Initial was 0. So final minus initial comes out to be 3. Yeah. All right. Look at this one now. The pressure of H2 required to make the potential of hydrogen electrode 0 in pure water. Have a look. So basically we have the hydrogen electrode. We need to calculate at what pressure, at what pressure, the reduction potential of hydrogen electrode becomes 0 in neutral water. At what pressure? the reduction potential of hydrogen electrode becomes zero in neutral water. So we have to make sure the reduction potential of hydrogen electrode becomes zero in neutral water. So for the reduction potential to be zero, I'll make sure the hydrogen electrode behaves like the cathode because at cathode only the reduction takes place. Reduction means gain of electrons. And when hydrogen behaves like the cathode, the reaction which takes place, that's two times H positive plus two electrons, it gives H2. This is the reaction which takes place when hydrogen electrode behaves like the cathode, correct? If I ask you how many moles of electrons are being exchanged, you will say two moles of electrons are being exchanged, right? 
we have to make the reduction potential of hydrogen electrode as zero. We have to make E R E D as zero. Correct? Now we will if I ask you what is Q C expression for this reaction? Q C start with the product. It's pressure of H2, which we need to calculate. At what pressure of H2? At what pressure? Divided by it's gonna be concentration of H positive raised bar two. Correct? Simple. Q C we got and we got. Right? Since it's mentioned that we have to calculate at what pressure the reduction potential of hydrogen electrode becomes zero in neutral water. Neutral water, you must be knowing, neutral water at 25 degrees centigrade has got the pH of 7. So what will be the H positive concentration in the neutral water? It's supposed to be 10 raised per minus 7 mole. 10 raised per minus 7 mole, right? Perfect. So if you got the H positive concentration, it's going to be partial pressure of H2 divided by H positive concentration is 10 raised per minus 7 raised to the power 2. So it's going to be partial pressure of H2 divided by 10 raised per minus 14. So you got QC. What is the super chat? Rakshan, please do not waste your money like this, okay? I appreciate it, but don't do this. It's not good. All right. QC is equal to partial pressure of H2 divided by 10 raised per minus 14, okay? Since you'll be using the Nernst equation now, Nernst equation says ERED, reduction potential of the hydrogen electrode, is equal to standard reduction potential of hydrogen electrode, SRP as well as SOP of hydrogen electrode, that's zero, correct? So it's zero minus 0 0.0591 divided by N value, that's two. It's log of QC. QC is pressure of H2 divided by 10 raised power minus 40, right? Now look at it carefully. ERED, it's already zero. This has to be zero, correct? This has to be zero, perfect. So if this is zero, this multiplied by this is zero, divided by this is zero. So I got something like this, log of partial pressure of H2 divided by 10 raised power minus 14 is equal to zero. Or you can say partial pressure of H2 divided by 10 raised power minus 14 is equal to, this is log to the base 10, 10 raised power zero is one, so from here, you got the partial pressure of H2 as 10 raised power minus 14 atm. So this has to be the pressure of H2. This has to be the pressure of H2. Then only, this has to be the pressure of H2. Then only, the reduction potential of hydrogen electrode will become zero in neutral water. Right? Okay? Is it clear to everyone? Yes? I'm sure you can solve this sort of equation as well. <clears throat> Moving on to one more question. Look at this particular equation carefully. Look at this particular equation carefully. What do you think? Will you be able to solve this question? And guys, I think, I think we'll do one thing. We won't take two, two chapters. Let's take only one, one chapter in the most expected series. Right? Let's take only one one chapter in the most expected series. I thought to take two two, but then the sessions will be long. They'll be two, two and a half hours. I don't want that. Because I have to take other channels as well, you know it. Right? Neat Midi is there, J English is there. So like this, I don't think I'll be able to handle all the three channels. So let's take one one chapter only. So for example, today we'll do electrostatics, I'm saying. Huh? <laughs> Today we are doing electrochemistry. Let's say tomorrow we'll be doing solutions. One one chapter every day. Cool, that seems good. Okay, look at this question. It's a nice question basically. This question, it's a nice question. Have a look, why? Understand why. KSP of aluminum hydroxide is given. E naught AL tri positive gives AL, it's given. Reduction potential of aluminum tri positive aluminum couple at pH 12 is. Okay, see the question, look at the question carefully. Basically, you are given with the electrode, this is the electrode. This is the electrode whose reduction potential you have to calculate. Well, my dear students, if you want to calculate the reduction potential of this electrode, then you will have to make sure that this electrode behaves like the cathode because at cathode only reduction takes place, right? You have to calculate the reduction potential. So you have to write the reduction reaction. You can only write the reduction reaction if this electrode behaves like the cathode. Now. Aluminum plus three to aluminum. So the reaction has to be aluminum plus three will be gaining some three electrons. 
and it will be getting converted into aluminum solid. So this is going to be the reaction taking place at the cathode if the electrode is behaving like the cathode. If I ask you how many electrons are being exchanged, how many moles of electrons are being exchanged, you'll say three moles, right? If I ask you what is the QC expression, QC expression, start with the product, solid, active mass unity, one, divided by concentration of Al to I positive. Raised to the power H stoichiometric coefficient, that's one, okay? Now, do you see anywhere Al tri positive concentration given to us? We are not given with the Al tri positive concentration, not at all, nowhere. Nowhere Al tri positive concentration is given. So how do I calculate the Al tri positive concentration? That is the point. In order to calculate the Al tri positive concentration, I'll be using the given conditions which are given to me. Say, pH is given to me as 12. If pH is 12, I must say pOH should be 2. Because you know pH plus pOH is 14 at 25 degrees centigrade. So pOH will be 2. And if pOH is 2, you can say OH negative concentration has to be 10 raised power minus 2 molar. Simple, right? If pH is x, that means H positive concentration is 10 raised power minus 6. If pOH is x, that means OH negative concentration is 10 raised power minus 6. Correct? That's what I did. So we got OH negative concentration, but I do not need OH negative concentration here. I need Al tri positive concentration. Now, where do I use this OH negative concentration? See, KSP, solubility product of ALOH whole thrice is given. ALOH whole thrice. Its KSP is given. So first of all, how it will undergo dissociation? This is going to be Al tri positive plus 3 times OH negative. That's how you're going to write it. Now, we will, if you write the expression for KSP, KSP expression is going to be concentration of Al tri positive raised power stoichiometric coefficient, concentration of OH negative raised power stoichiometric coefficient, right? KSP is given to me as 10 raised to the power minus 36, all right? From here, I'll be writing Al tri positive concentration. OH negative concentration was 10 raised to the power minus 2 raised to the power 3, which makes it 10 raised to the power minus 6, right? So from here, you will be getting the Al tri positive concentration, which comes out to be 10 raised to the power minus 30 molar. This is Al tri positive concentration. If you got Al tri positive concentration, so QC you got as 10 raised to the power 30. This is QC. Since you got QC, everything you got. Now it's time to use the Nernest equation. Reduction potential of the half cell is equal to standard reduction potential. Standard reduction potential of the half cell is given to me. Minus 1.66. Minus 0 0.0591. Divided by n value is 3. Log of QC. QC is 10 raised power 30. QC is 10 raised power 30. So I'll say reduction potential of the half cell is equal to minus 1.66. Minus 0 0.0591 divided by 3. Log of m raised power n is n log m. So 30 log 10 is 1. So this is 3 1, this is 3 10. Perfect. So it's going to be minus 1.66 minus 0 0.591. Just solve it, get the answer in volts. That's all. Got it? Yes? This sort of equation you should be able to solve from now onwards easily, right? You got to know the procedure of solving the equation. Right? This can be asked in your neat examination as well. Right? You never know. All right, people. A simple question, which is going to boost up your confidence for sure. What do you think about this one? What do you think about this one? What do you think about this one? Can you solve this one quickly, everyone? Let me know the answer of this particular question. What do you think? Quickly, how much charge is required for the reduction of one mole of zinc dipositive to zinc? People are saying it's supposed to be A. Is that? Is everyone fine with A? Let's see. Let's give it a try. Let's see what the question is. How much charge is required for the reduction of one mole of zinc dipositive into zinc? Okay, so basically you are converting zinc dipositive into zinc. Perfect, you have to convert zinc dipositive into zinc. How you are going to convert the zinc dipositive into zinc? When the zinc dipositive will gain two electrons? So can I say in order to get one mole of zinc, in order to get one mole of zinc, can I say two moles of electrons are required? Two moles of electrons are required. 
the charge present on one mole of electron is one farad. The charge present on two moles of electrons is two farad. One farad is nine six five double zero. So two multiplied by nine six five double zero coulombs. So this much charge is required for to get one mole of zinc, right? To get one mole of zinc. Perfect. This sort of equation you should be able to solve from now on easily again, right? Yeah. Someone is saying, sir, you do not hurry today. Is that? When was I hurrying? Okay, what do you think about this one? What do you think about this one? The number of farads required to produce 20 grams calcium from molten CaCl2. So you have to get calcium. Right? You have to get calcium. So basically calcium is getting deposited. 20 grams of calcium is being deposited. So when calcium will be getting deposited, when calcium die positive in the solution, will be getting two electrons at cathode and will be getting converted into calcium, right? This is the reaction which has to happen at cathode, then only calcium will be getting deposited, right? If I ask you, what is the n factor of this particular calcium here? n factor of calcium, how you are going to calculate the n factor of calcium? It is moles of electrons exchanged divided by stoichiometric coefficient of calcium. The value comes out to be two. This is the n factor of calcium, right? Every one of you must be knowing. This is the n factor of calcium. Now, my dear students, tell me one thing. If I use the Faraday's first law, mass of calcium deposited is equal to equivalent mass of calcium multiplied by I multiplied by T divided by 96500, right? Mass of calcium deposited, that is 20 grams, is equal to equivalent mass of calcium means molar mass of calcium divided by n factor of calcium in the denominator you have got 96500 current of how much amperes okay current is not given so instead of i multiplied by t instead of i multiplied by t i can write q because q is equal to it so this is 220 means 40 so this 40 40 cancelled so from here you got to know q as 96500 coulombs or you can say q is equal to 1 farad right that's something which you are supposed to calculate the value of q which you got to know as 1 farad right perfect all right one more question for you give it a try what do you think about this one what do you think about this particular question give it a try quickly quickly give it a try when 0.1 moles of mno4 dye is oxidized the quantity of electricity required to completely oxidize MnO4 di negative. So basically you are converting MnO4 di negative. Basically you are going to convert MnO4 di negative to what? To MnO4 negative. How much charge is required, right? See, first of all, the oxidation state of manganese over here is plus 6. The oxidation state of manganese over here is plus 7. Plus 6 to plus 7 means increase in the oxidation state. Increase in the oxidation state means oxidation, loss of electrons. So, I would say MnO4 dinegative will be losing one electron, then only it will be converted into MnO4 negative, right? So, can I say, for the oxidation of one mole of MnO4 dinegative, for the oxidation of one mole of MnO4 dinegative, I would say one mole electron is transferred, one mole electron is required, right? One mole electron is required. One mole electron carries the charge of one farad. Okay. So for the oxidation of one mole electron, one farad charge is required. 96500 coulombs of charge is required. But do I have to do the oxidation of one mole of MnO4 dinegative? No. I need to do the oxidation of 0.1 moles of MnO4 dinegative. For the oxidation of 0.1 moles of MnO4 dinegative, how much charge will be required? It will be 96500 multiplied by 0 0.1 the value will be 9650 coulombs this much charge is required which we are supposed to calculate 9650 coulombs i'm sure this is again clear to everyone this is something which every one of you should tell me in the chats right now what should be the answer of this question faraday's second law of electrolysis is related to what equivalent weights of the electrolytes right it's related to the equivalent weights of the electrolytes you must be knowing this. Again, Faraday's second law. What does it state basically? 
whenever you'll be having two or more than two electrolytic cells containing different electrolytes in series. The gram equivalence deposited or liberated at every electrode will be the same, right? That is the simplest statement of Faraday's second law. Whenever you'll be having two or more than two electrolytic cells containing different electrodes in series, containing different electrolytes in series, the gram equivalence of substance deposited or liberated at every electrode will be the same, correct? So, this is going to be the answer of the question, right? This is going to be the answer of the question. Perfect. All right. One question which is completely formula based and you like to solve these questions, I'm sure. Yeah. What do you think about this one? What do you think about this one? Quickly. The resistance of one normal solution of acetic acid. The resistance of one normal solution of acetic acid is 250 ohms. One normal solution. Cell constant, which is L by A basically. That is 1.15 centimeter inverse. The equivalent conductance. You are supposed to calculate lambda EQ. Lambda EQ you have to calculate in Simon centimeter square per equivalent. Simon centimeter square per equivalent, right? So you must be knowing lambda EQ is basically equal to kappa multiplied by thousand divided by normality. When? You have to calculate it in Simon centimeter square per equivalent, right? Well, we will normality is given. Conductivity is not given. So it's time to calculate conductivity first. You must be knowing kappa conductivity is equal to 1 divided by R <coughs> multiplied by L by A. So kappa has to be equal to 1 divided by R is 250. L by A is 1.15. So from here, you'll be getting the conductivity that is in Simon centimeter inverse, right? So once you get conductivity, normality you have into 1000, you'll be getting what? You'll be getting lambda EQ, which you are supposed to calculate. Perfect? Yes? So my dear students, the last question with which I'll end the session, but this question is going to be your homework. You guys are going to let me know the answer of this question in the comment section of this particular video. It's based on the kohl ross law, a simple and basic question. Right? <clears throat> Do give it a try. And let me know it's answered in the comment section of this particular video. Yeah? Perfect. And if you have not liked the session yet, please and please do like the session. Share it with everyone. So from now onwards, we'll have the regular sessions, okay? Of the most expected chapter wise. So this was all about electrochemistry. Perfect. So one day, one chapter will be done. I'll get the thumbnail of this session modified. It was electrochemistry and solution written, but one day we'll be doing one chapter only. Cool? All right then, Chalo, let's... When is the next session? See, tomorrow I have to take a session on J English channel at the same time. So day after tomorrow we'll have the next session. Day after tomorrow. Day after tomorrow we'll have the next session. And you can let me know in the comment section of this video which chapters most expected questions do you want in the day after tomorrow's session. Okay? Take care, guys. God bless you all. Bye-bye. Bye. Take care.